ROS2 C++ based node is quite interesting and there are multiple ways we can initialize it. In this video, we are going to be looking at how we can expand the functionality of a C++ node with two different approaches and which one is beneficial. So let's start by looking at the base structure, how it works. We have two ways to instantiate our ROS2 nodes. The first one is smaller one, the second one is a bigger one talking layman terms but what is actually happening from c++ perspective is it is creating a shade pointer std shade pointer is created on the other side in node b we have inheritance concept of c++ which is deriving a class into our r drive named class but both of these are actually taking features from rclcpp node here you can see it is actually driving the whole rclcpp node and its features on the other side it is just creating a shade pointer to rclcpp node the thing is both are going to just run and they have nothing inside like subscribers publisher nothing but the code here is big because of the driving of the class and we have to define the constructor now once we have done that at this point there is no big difference in these just number of lines are increased but the main benefit is going to come up when we are going to add multiple subscriber and publishers let's first add one subscriber so here we can see we have one subscriber on our drive class and a subscriber on the basic shared pointer based class code of this inheritance based node is now increasing but the size of the code or the number of lines in the code of the basic shared pointer is not increasing and the main aspect that you have to look into the flow of the code here we are creating a timer that at this specific time which is one second you are going to run this publish message thing on the other side we have less control here that you are going to just print out data with the rate of one at this point both of these have same functionality and same output the main difference comes in the next step where we have to introduce a multiple publisher multiple subscriber in one single node that is not a good practice but you can understand in depth what are the pros and cons of both of these now this code becomes even more complex and putting it side by side is now harder but here is the crux of it we have two publishers and one subscriber same on this side and then we are having obviously different publishing functions on one and for the subscriber we are having another different function but on this side side of simple node a we are doing some sort of a trick that here is a counter that when it has spent two seconds then you are going to publish the string counter otherwise just publish the integer counter that's how it is working but we have added the camera subscription explicitly in another function so in a nutshell this one which is more easier to understand it's readable it can be extended easily this approach is more appreciated because it makes lives of other developers easy and your code will be more easily understandable this is going to be easy in looking and writing to some extent but this is going to be more usable and easy to use for other people as well and keep a simple context when developing so everything is explicit here defined to specific members which are set to be private or public this is our own choice this is again a more control that we have here and what we do we define it with different timing functionality that every one second publish this every two second publish this so this is different timing functionality we are easily giving them and on the subscription we are totally open to whatever time it appears but we can also control that for all of these publishers we have these shade pointers and these are also private so public private accessibilities and extension is easy all of these features are for this derived class functionality which is preferred and for this reason in ROS2 wiki the same approach is utilized which is deriving from RCL cpp node into minimal publisher and minimal subscribe it is using this approach as a standard there is one more feature that you can utilize is create your own class which is derived from rcl cpp node and you can then create this specific class as a base class and further inherent it this is confusing but you can do this for not creating similar type of classes with similar message types you can simply create it as a 
library or and then keep on deriving your classes from that and you don't need to write these things again and again but this again provides you a lot of easy to read and easy to extend functionality you can still access the rclcpp from the right of this specific class I can understand a lot of details explored and looked at and you might be ignoring these aspects when you are looking at code at github repositories but this was important I thought for students who are getting into ROS because they only see C++ ROS2 node and that's the only way of initializing but I think now they will be able to do good decisions based on what requirement they have how they can initialize the same node with different perspectives.